Hi, I'm Kinkas and I'm a Synth DIY guy. In this channel, we build synthesizers and make music and sound art with modulars and new technologies. So go ahead and click like and subscribe if you're into that sort of thing. Today, we're building the CV Thing module from Bifaco. CV Thing is the little brother of Bifaco's voltage controlled MIDI controller module. It's an 8 channel CV to MIDI converter with both USB and TRS MIDI outputs a push-button encoder, and an OLED display with a very intuitive navigation system. It even comes with its own TRS to DIN converter. The compact size makes it perfect for smaller systems, and allows you to use modular signals to control parameters in your DAW, your iPad synths, or hardware synths with MIDI assignable parameters. And in case you don't have a DAW with modular capabilities, just install Bitwig 8-Track with the included license. The kit comes with everything you need, including the panel, PCBs, Teensy and OLED, as well as all of the electronic and hardware components, the power cable and some knurlies for mounting. I started by soldering the resistors, diodes and ferrite beads from the top of the two PCBs while still attached. I always measure a resistor from each strip to check the value, then follow the build guide to position them on the board. After soldering, I turned the boards around for trimming and touching up my work. I then detached the boards from each other, removed the tabs, and placed on the two IC sockets. Using the other board to hold the sockets down, I turned it around to solder. always soldering opposing corner pins to keep the socket steady before soldering all the rest. Next came the ceramic capacitors. and the electrolytics, minding their correct polarity. These have wider lead spacing than the pads on the board, so I used my pliers to straighten them out. I then installed both voltage regulators, which look like transistors. Next up was the power header. Now for the Teensy header assembly. I snapped the male and female headers together first, then used the Teensy itself to line them up and solder everything up. Now for the pogo pins. I had never seen these before. They are springy on one end and are meant to connect to the USB pads on the Teensy. Make sure the springy end faces up towards the Teensy and install them one at a time, carefully adjusting them by reflowing the solder and moving them gently until they are totally straight and make perfect contact with the Teensy pads. For the second one, I used the cardboard from a resistor strip to spare my fingers and help line it up. I then flattened the IC terminals a bit by pressing them onto my work surface and snapped them into their sockets. Then I assembled the longer male and female headers together which will connect the two boards. 
To make it easier to line them up and solder, I went ahead and attached the metal hex spacer to one of the boards. Once the headers were in place, I tightened the spacer on the other board as well and proceeded to solder on the headers. There was another small set of male headers left, so I installed those as well. At this point, the build guide recommends you plug the module in and check some voltages, to avoid having to come back and troubleshoot once the assembly is finished. So I did that, following the guide on the manual. Installing the OLED is a bit tricky, and I made some mistakes on camera so you don't have to. Watch closely. First, cut the included IC socket in half. You'll use only one line of connectors. And it's indeed a good idea to use a socket, as you'll see in a minute. The OLED leads are too long, you'll have to trim them. In fact, I even removed the nylon base off the pins, very carefully with some pliers. Next, I attached the nylon standoffs to the board and put on the display and proceeded to solder on the socket. The leads were still long, so I trimmed them a bit more before fastening the display to the standoffs. I then turned on the module again to verify that it was booting and displaying properly, which it was. I snapped on all of the panel components, but before I put on the panel, I proceeded to glue on the acrylic window that goes over the display. I'd had trouble with the VCMC build when I did this. Some crazy glue leaked onto the panel and stained it. So this time I decided to use masking tape to protect the screen and less glue in general. This turned out to be a mistake, as the glue seeped through the tape and stained the edges of the acrylic. It was also impossible to completely remove all of the masking tape, so the result was less than great. I then placed the panel, pre-tightened all of the nuts and soldered everything up. But when I started to finish tightening the nuts after soldering, I heard a crack. It turned out I had missed some washers and a nut that go on the encoder shaft underneath the panel. And as I tightened the top nut, I squeezed and cracked the OLED, which ruined it. Bifaco were kind enough to send me a replacement OLED as well as a new panel and acrylic window, so I could fix all my goofs. This time, I used just masking tape to hold the window on.
and made sure to place the washers and the nut on the encoder before fastening on the panel. And it turned out beautifully. Make sure you don't make the same mistakes I made. Bifaco is not responsible for user assembly errors. That's it for now, I hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for the demo video coming soon. See you soon and stay noisy.